All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so this is just a brief outline of what we're gonna go over tonight. So we're gonna talk about requirements to apply for transfer admission. Um, so that includes eligibility, that'll include um, some of the different application components. Um, and so we'll talk you through a little bit as well about um, the different application requirements and, and what we need from those. Um, then we'll go over some of our deadlines and frequently asked questions, and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout the night, please put them in the Q&A box, um, and we'll definitely make sure to answer your questions um, at the end of this presentation. So the first thing to ask yourself when you want to apply to transfer to Richmond is, am I eligible to be able to do so? So there are a few eligibility requirements um, that we do have. So the first of which is that you have approximately 24 semester hours that you have taken or are in progress at your current university or college. So essentially those credits would be done by the time that you would enter uh, Richmond as a transfer student. Um, we are on a unit system, which is why you see that 6.82 decimal right there. Um, but we did that equivalent 24 semester hours calculation. Um, but that's essentially about a full year's worth of college coursework. Um, so, for example, if you're currently a first year student at your current institution, um, you would be eligible to apply to transfer um, starting with the fall 2024 entry, because by that point you would have completed um, at least a year's college coursework in theory. Um, if you're currently a sophomore, um, then you're eligible to apply for spring 2024 entry or beyond because again, in theory, you would already have a year's worth of college coursework under your belt. Um, we also have some curricular requirements that we're looking for when evaluating transfer students. So for math, we need to make sure that our transfer applicants have completed through at least algebra two um, and that you've completed at least two years worth of a second language. Now, if you completed these in high school and you know we see those classes on your high school transcript that you submit to us, then you've met those requirements. Um, if you haven't completed one or both of those in high school, you will need to have completed it at your current um, college or university um, in order to apply to Richmond. So especially for that uh, second language requirement, that just means you'd have to have through the 200 level of a particular lang language by the time that you apply. Um, the other eligibility requirement that we're looking for is that you are in good academic standing, um, which we can see on your transcript. So that means not being on academic probation, for instance. Um, and we're also looking at making sure that you are in good social or judicial standing as well. And Nadine's gonna talk through a little bit more about how we um, know that you are in good social standing um, in our next slide. Alrighty, so what do you need to complete an application for transfer to Richmond? Um, so we'll go through the elements of the application um, and talk a bit about how you can submit those materials to our office as well. Um, so first and foremost is of course the application itself. Um, we utilize the common application, the coalition application for transfer, um, and we have our own University of Richmond application. Um, that is accessible through our website um, on the transfer admission page. Um, so you can utilize that as well. Um, and that could be easier for you or if you already have an account set up or applying to other institutions um, for transfer and want to use common application or coalition application, please feel free to do that. We don't have any preference um, as to what you or what um, different applications you're using to apply to us. Um, 
within the application, there will be um, a question as to uh, your personal statement as to why you are choosing to transfer institutions. Um, so the, the more details, certainly the better. Um, we like to understand um, the background and context that you're coming from, a little bit about your story. Um, it is a personal statement, so certainly make it personal and let us know um, what your intentions are around transferring institutions. Um, this can be also particularly helpful if um, you have been to more than one institution um, and just helping us understand a little bit about your educational progress um, and why you're interested in attending University of Richmond. We also need uh, official transcripts uh, from your uh, high school. So your final high school transcript. Um, so this would mean that your high school transcript includes your graduation date on the transcript. Um, we only accept transcripts officially directly from the institution. So that means that your high school will need to send us a copy um, of your final high school transcript. Um, typically, this can be done via um, electronic services like a parchment, for example. Um, typically, high schools have a way to send that to us electronically, but we do have to have it directly from the school. Um, we also require any and all transcripts from any colleges or universities you have attended since graduating from high school. Um, so again, we need that officially directly from the institution um, and it needs to be from any institution that you attended. Um, this again, allows us just to understand a little bit about your story and context and your educational progression. Um, what you don't need to worry about um, sending at the point of application review um, would be a dual enrollment transcript. So if you took uh, classes in high school in a community college setting, for example, um, or you had a high school teacher that was um, certified to teach dual enrollment and you took those classes, um, we won't need those necessarily um, at the outset for application review because those grades should be on your high school transcript. Um, if those grades are not on your high school transcript and you do wanna send in um, a separate uh, college transcript from your dual enrollment credit, please do. But um, typically that is captured um, through your final high school transcript. Um, next is the college report form. Um, sometimes students get a little tripped up on this form in particular um, because it is not the same as the college transcript. Um, the college report form is a PDF form that needs to be signed by either the um, Dean of Students or some college official that has um, access to your judicial record at your institution, um, as well as your academic record. Sometimes those offices are separate, so you might have to have this form signed by two different offices. So again, someone who can attest to your academic standing, as well as your social standing at your institution. Um, this this PDF form we have linked in the application materials um, webpage on our transfer site. Um, so you can utilize either the one that is provided by Common Application or the Coalition Application. Um, we don't have one specifically. So if you are, for example, deciding to utilize our University of Richmond application, you'll just use the Common App or Coalition Application College Report form. The next um, piece of the pie is going to be a letter of recommendation from an academic source at the college level. Um, so preferably we would like to see a recommendation letter from a professor um, or faculty member that um, knows you through your academic context at your current institution. Um, 
We also can accept letters from an academic advisor, for example, but someone who can speak to your academic performance um, at the college level is really what we need to see. Um, we can certainly accept additional letters of recommendation from a high school teacher, um, but that will not satisfy the requirement in order to complete your application. So please be sure um, when you are thinking about applying to transfer and thinking about all the steps that you need to take in order to prepare your application. Um, thinking about who you might want to have write that recommendation for you and allowing them the time also to request the letter and for them to write and submit the letter. So just make sure that you're backing up and thinking about the timing um, of requesting these materials as well, um, because that'll just set you up for success as you're trying to complete your application. We also need a description of any and all college courses that you have taken. Um, this helps us streamline the credit evaluation process um, for students so that when you are admitted and you receive your admission letter, you will also receive instructions on how to log into Grad Tracker, which is where you can see how all of your credits transferred to Richmond. Um, if we didn't receive those course descriptions with your application materials, that will just delay us doing the course evaluation because we will only do credit evaluations for admitted students. Um, so make sure that you take the time to um, review the classes that you've taken, open up the online course catalog that's offered by your institution and just copy and paste the course title and the little like three to four sentence description that's provided with the course. Um, please uh, make sure that you just copy and paste that into a Word document, um, save it as a PDF or send it to us as a Word document. You can upload that through your SPIDER portal or email it to um, application at richmond.edu to be added to your file. Um, please do not upload entire um, course catalogs um, or syllabi for um, the courses. Um, we just need, um, again, a, a concise listing of the courses you've taken and the descriptions. Lastly, um, we would need a gap of enrollment explanation. If you have not been consistently enrolled in a college or university since graduating high school. Um, so let's say you graduated high school and you decided to take a semester um, gap experience. Um, we would want to know what you were doing during that semester and how you were spending your time. So any time off that you're taking um, after high school graduation, we want to know what you're doing during that time if you were not enrolled at a college or university. One last thing that isn't on the application requirements um, because it is not always required, um, but at times the admission committee may request a midterm report if we feel we want just a little bit more academic information from you. Um, this is particularly helpful when we have students who have only completed one semester of college coursework. So for um, students who are currently in their first year at another institution and thinking about transferring to Richmond, you'll have that one completed fall semester for us to review along with your high school credentials. Um, but it can also be helpful for us to see how you might be doing in your spring semester as well. Um, so that again is a PDF form that you can get from the Common Application or Coalition Application. Um, it has space for you to write down the courses that you're taking and then um, get signatures from your professors of uh, where your grade currently stands in the class. Um, and that can be really helpful for us just to get um, a more complete picture of the academic trend um, that, that we're seeing. And hopefully you're having a great fall semester and we just wanna see that you're continuing um, those great grades as you're going into the spring term. 
Okay, so for international students, um, so students who are non-US citizens and non-permanent residents, um, we need uh, just a couple more things. Um, one is a international financial certification form. Um, this is a form that you will fill out electronically uh, indicating um, what funds you have available for um, funding your education. Um, so Richmond for transfer students is need aware um, in our review process for, for students who are not citizens or permanent residents. Um, so that means that because we have a limited aid budget for international students, um, we need to take into account um, your ability to pay um, if, if you are able to fund your education to Richmond. So we do need that financial certification form to complete your application. Um, we also need to see demonstrated English proficiency. Um, this can come in a number of ways. Um, one way um, is through a TOEFL score. Um, we can also waive the TOEFL score by um, some various um, IELTS scores, for example, um, or if you have received a C grade or better in a English composition course. Um, so that wouldn't be an English as a second language course, but like an English literature class or English composition course. Um, so if you also visit um, the international section of our admission website, um, there is a detailed list of the waivers um, that you can um, have uh, for a, a TOEFL for demonstrated English proficiency. Okay, so that brings us to our deadlines because if you have all these materials and you don't submit it by the deadline, then it's all for naught. So of course we want to make sure that you are um, paying attention to our deadlines. I'm actually gonna start um, with our deadline for spring entry first since that's coming up um, on November 1st. So for students looking to enter next semester, um, that's the deadline. And then these are approximate notification dates. So, you know, give it some leeway either way. Um, but for students applying for that spring entry, we usually notify on or around December 5th. And then for students looking to enter in the fall semester, um, the deadline for that application is March 1st, and we usually notify um, on or around April 15th. Now, we also do have credential deadlines that tend to be about 10 days after this deadline that you see on the screen. Um, but those are kind of like safety nets in a sense for, um, you know, you've submitted your application by the deadline, but maybe um, we still need a transcript to come in or another application credential to come in. Because we know that, you know, some of that stuff is out of your control because the school needs to send it and maybe it got lost in the mail or lost in cyberspace somewhere. Um, but really, you should be trying to make sure that you have everything in by the deadline. So as Nadine was referencing earlier with recommendation letters, giving you know your recommenders a good lead time. Um, also, things like your college reporter requesting transcripts, making sure you're doing that early enough to, to have those credentials in on time. Um, oftentimes, a lot of students uh, get tripped up in the process just because their application remains incomplete for so long. So that's why we're trying to encourage you to make sure um, that you have all your ducks in a row by the time this deadline rolls around. And then, of course, you know, if you submit your application and maybe we're waiting for that one more thing, you have that roughly 10 day grace period to get everything in. But like we keep emphasizing, try to have everything ready to submit um, by the deadline if you can. That just makes your life a lot easier and it makes our lives easier too. So now we're entering the portion where uh, we have a few frequently asked questions that we often um, get asked. Um, so we'll answer those. And then after this, we will wrap up with any other questions you might have. Um, so we'll start with this very understandably common question, which is how do I know which of my classes will transfer? 
Um, so you might have heard Nadine reference earlier that part of the application components that you're submitting are those course descriptions. And so that's for our university registrar to use to evaluate and then give all admitted students a credit evaluation. So upon acceptance, you get that login to grad tracker that Nadine was referencing. And that really goes into detail for you in terms of which of your classes that you've already taken transfer over, how many credits you get for those, maybe they're fulfilling certain general education requ requirements that we have, and you know that evaluation tells you which requirements those are fulfilling. So there's really a lot of detail um, provided for you there. Um, the registrar isn't able to do credit evaluations for prospective students just because it simply doesn't have the capacity to do so. Um, but rest assured, you have all that information as soon as you are accepted to Richmond. And then that way, you have all the information that you need, hopefully, um, to make a decision in terms of whether or not you choose to ultimately enroll at Richmond. Okay, we often get questions around what classes should I current should I be taking at my current institution to set me up for success to transfer to Richmond. Um, so we don't have any specific course requirements necessarily that we're, we're looking for for admission to Richmond. Um, that being the exception um, that Julie talked about in some of our minimum requirements for admission around math and um, a second language, um, which also to note, um, American Sign Language also would count um, as uh, fulfillment for the second language requirement. Um, so I suggest that students should follow a, um, a broad curriculum. So Richmond is a liberal arts institution. Um, so taking courses in various subject areas um, will set you up for success at Richmond. Um, you don't need to necessarily get too bogged down in the specifics of getting a head start on a major. Um, at another institution. Um, our academic departments really value the courses that they offer and the experience at Richmond. Um, and so taking some more general classes is really gonna help you more in the long run. I would say the exception to that would be if you have an interest in applying um, to Richmond because you have an interest in studying business, um, I highly recommend at least taking calculus. Um, that will definitely set you up for success um, in completing some of the prerequisites that are required to declare within the business school. If you are currently at a two-year institution or um, at an institution that is not accredited by the AACSB. Um, I always get the, the C and the S um, mixed up, but um, then those business classes wouldn't transfer to Richmond because we only accept um, business courses from other accredited institutions. Um, so if you are interested in business, I still recommend sticking to that pretty broad curriculum and then diving deeper into um, the prerequisites again for um, business administration, finance or accounting, which would include econ, accounting and calculus. Um, you can still get that calculus out of the way at an other institution, but um, econ and accounting have to come from those other accredited institutions. Otherwise, I recommend visiting our registrar's website and looking at our general education requirements. Um, and that just gives you kind of an idea of the general classes um, that our students are taking as their foundational curriculum at Richmond. And um, if you're finding courses that match those descriptions at your current institution, you're in a great place to get started at Richmond. If you do have a specific question about a course at your current institution, if you're saying, okay, I wanna take this biology 102 class and I wanna know if it's gonna to transfer to Richmond, um, go ahead and send us the course title, the description and the institution that um, you're thinking about um, taking the class and to transfer at richmond.edu. Our 
contact email address. Um, and we can send it on to the right um, contact within the registrar's office who can give us an idea of that specific class will transfer. Um, so just to clarify, we don't provide full credit evaluations prior to admission, but if you have questions about like one or two specific classes, that is something that we certainly have the bandwidth to address so that you know um, a class will, will come, will most likely transfer to Richmond. So another question we often receive is about if we have any guaranteed admission agreements with any other colleges. Um, so sometimes these are also called articulation agreements. Um, and if you're not familiar with those, essentially there are some schools, specifically community colleges, um, that have agreements with four-year institutions that, you know, if a student take certain coursework and, you know, does well in that coursework, then they definitely will be able to transfer into that four-year institution. Um, Richmond is a private institution, so we're not bound to any of those necessarily. We don't have an articulation agreement um, with any other institutions. However, um, I would say that if you are meeting the requirements for a guaranteed admission agreement um, with another school, especially if you're uh, doing so within Virginia, um, you're very likely going to be a competitive applicant um, within our pool. So that's also something to think about, um, you know, if we don't necessarily have that agreement, but you're performing well and and taking, you know, these courses, then they're, they're, you're very likely going to be competitive in our pool. Are there certain majors that are more difficult to transfer into? Um, really not necessarily. Um, I touched on this a little bit in terms of what kind of classes that you should take um, for Richmond. So for the business school, there are prerequisite courses that students have to complete in order to declare as a business major. Um, and those, again, are accounting, econ, and calculus. Um, so for students who are um, transferring as juniors, for example, um, it's just a tighter timeline to complete some of those um, requirements for the business program. It's certainly still doable, um, but just keep in mind that um, there will be definitely a lot of support coming from um, our business advising arm to help you um, know all the, um, the steps that you have to take to declare as a business major and then also kind of your two-year plan to complete um, the requirements for that major. Um, so that's the only one that gets a little bit trickier, particularly if um, students perhaps come from a community college um, or two-year environment where um, they have like a associates in business, for example. Um, some of those classes, most of those classes aren't likely to transfer to our business program. Um, so we might just have to work on what the timeline looks like realistically for you to graduate um, within that two years so you can graduate on time from Richmond. So um, just a little bit of nuance there, but you can really kind of cross that bridge um, when you come to it. Um, should you be admitted to Richmond and then having some chats with our advising um, within the business school? Um, so something just to keep in mind, um, but all Richmond students, all Richmond trans for students are admitted as undecided to Richmond. So when we are evaluating you in the application process, we are not admitting you into any specific school or major. So just like our first year application process, everyone is beginning in the same boat. Um, it certainly is an interest to us as to what you're thinking about majoring in. That's great, we love to know that, um, but it's not necessarily something that we're um, holding you to um, as anything set in stone, understanding that when you get to Richmond, um, maybe you might discover a different pathway um, that you might wanna take. And so we just wanna keep that option open. So we are not direct admitting into any, any major or school. All right. So with that, we've reached the end. So if you have any questions right now, please put them in the Q&A box so that we can answer them. But while 
we're waiting on that. I'll put in a little plug. If you mm -hmm. have any questions or um, concerns or need any assistance moving forward, um, please feel free to reach out to our transfer specific um, inbox. So that's transfer at richmond.edu. Um, you can send any questions there and, and we'll get back to you in a timely manner. So please feel free to utilize that um, if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. <laughs> Let's see. I think we're just so good at our jobs that we yeah. answered yeah. any and all questions. <laughs> all those questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, drive, I'll drive home one of Julie's points around dates and deadlines and just, um, underlining her point that the biggest hurdle to a successful application sometimes for transfer admission is just completing the, the application. Um, so certainly um, making sure that you're keeping track of um, what your colleges and universities require through the process, um, utilizing your spider portal. So um, when you apply to Richmond, you will get um, access to a portal with all of the application checklist items. So you can see what we have and what we don't have. Um, at times, sometimes we need a little bit, um, a couple of days to process things to your application, have everything match up. Um, so if things don't look right in a couple of days, um, definitely reach out to the transfer inbox, transfer at richmond.edu, just one more time. Um, and uh, we'll be able to, to check on some documents um, for you um, or ask you to resend them to us just so that we know that, again, we're gonna get all of those, those documents in time. So just staying organized and on top of things is really critical um, to having a successful application really overall. Great, well, I think with that, that excellent plug. Thank you, Nadine. We can <laughs> go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you again for your time. Um, and we look forward to hopefully um, reading any applications that you have. <laughs>